Two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. What's on tap podcast? Coming to you live from my living room once again. And today we are joined by Martin. Hello. Hello. It's uh, been a week since we've had you on the show last. Uh, something like that, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, how you been doing? Uh, really good. Uh, and we're going to get to that because I, I brought a very special bottle that I own only thanks to you, actually. You're very excited about this. Because um, we, we were hanging out and you offhand mentioned... I think that this particular web shop has gotten in some uh, some beers from this particular brewery. Mm-hmm. And I immediately take up my phone and frantically start grabbing stuff into the cart. And I get the last bottle. This was one bottle left and you were able to secure it. Yes. To, to share with me on the show. So yes. I'm very, very flattered. And this is a Stockholm brewery. As far as I, I know. Yeah, as far as I know. Um, it's Maria Torget's Micro, micro Brickery. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> um, and it is a stout, core malt, water, and hops. Yeah. That's all it says. I don't and think there are any special ingredients. It's a long shock. What is long? Long, long shock. Q- 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 long uh, cuke. So it's oh, because there's no two dots over the yeah, over yeah. the. Okay, long so cuke. Basically so it's long means... penis, long long cock is what it means, right? <laughs> no, that it would means, be. It a, means a, big you... penis stout. Sure. <laughs> no, no, long cook is when you uh, cook something for a really for long time. A long period of time. So literally, it is like long cook. Yes. So it's a, like like it sounds is is what it is. Right. Yeah. And so, it's a, so so a bœuf bourguignon could be called long cook, but um, but it's not that long. If you spend like f- more than four hours on just boiling a meal, that becomes a long cook. Okay. So it could be like. Um, Cocovan or something yeah. that requires a long, yeah. a long period, like uh, smoking meat or something would be yes. a, a long cook because it takes four and to twenty-four hours, depending on what you're what you're yeah. cooking. But when I hear that word, I think of meat, almost mm-hmm. uh, not pulled pork because that doesn't take that long. But well, you get you get if you pull- do if you do a pork shoulder, that's a six to eight hour cook. Yes, that's so that's, that's exactly pulled pork, pulled pork does take a long period of time. Yeah, but this is a beer. It's a twelve percent uh, stout. Um, I don't have any more information on this because there's I, literally nothing on the label that it, tells you anything more about it. It's a big label on a super tiny bottle. The label doesn't even fit the bottle. Yeah. They had to scrunch it up. <laughs> All right, so let's. Hmm, it smells amazing. A lot um, of sweetness, a lot of mm-hmm. sugar, um, chocolate. Yes. Yeah. A little coffee from roastiness. Yes. Yeah. Zero, zero carbonation. This is one of the flattest outs. I mean, even when you agitate it aggressively, yeah, impossible it's to just get any... motor oil uh, coating the side of the glass. Uh, yeah, there's nothing as far as carbonation goes on this. So this should be just an oily mouthfeel. Yes. Uh, that's what I'm expecting. All right, cheers. Cheers. Yep. Although there is... A little bit of carbonation in there, I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely coats the coats the mouth quite aggressively. <laughs> yeah. There, uh, now I'm getting some vanilla notes mm-hmm. or, or sweetness in that direction. Yeah. I'm getting some of the burnt notes off of it. Um, maybe a little cinnamon. Yeah. yeah. Some, some kind of spiciness. The, f- the the flavor I'm tasting actually reminds me of nerd brewing stouts. A little bit, yeah, I get that. That might be the mouth feel because both of these breweries, both nerd brewing and Maria Toyot, they go into this super thick direction. Yeah, I mean, this is the viscosity on this is crazy. Yeah, it and is I love it. Oily is an understatement. I get a little licorice on the nose actually after mm-hmm. having tasted it. And the flavor as well, like a salty, um, salty character. Yeah, yeah. There's but not a, like the um, the cinnamon licorice um, nerd brewing one, which was that was just crazy. That was oh, that was such intense licorice. It hurt. <clears throat> but now this is really 
It's really good. Really sticky on the lips, though. Yes. Yeah. Exactly what I <clears throat> needed. Yeah. <laughs> mm. With a bottle of this size, does it say how? What? What? It says 33 centiliters. That yeah. can't possibly be true. Yeah, that's a 33 centiliter bottle. Have you ever seen the Tactor Nuclear Penguin or the... Um... So these two bottles <coughs> are the same. No, 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 that's not right. You're right. No, this is a... Um, this is the... Um, it's 25 or 18. 25. Yeah, yeah, this is 25 centiliters. Has to be. So the label actually lies. Yeah, this is not 330 milliliters. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, I didn't get it from Sustainable Logic, otherwise we should have ratted them out. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. But it doesn't look like a 25 centiliter bottle either. It looks... 18. 18. Wow. I've, I've seen mean, some Demolin beers in 18 centiliter yeah. bottles. It, no, no, I mean, this doesn't look... I'm thinking of the... Of the... Um, Hop Shot and the... Oh, those are even Technica smaller. Nuclear Penguin. And those are even smaller. Yeah, yeah, they're a little bit yeah. smaller than this. So this has got to be... Not this is the twenty. This is in between size between the sure. I, I get yeah, it. whatever size it is, whatever, whatever this is. So, it, uh, I get like this medicine bottle kind of feeling mm -hmm. because the label uh, has this like stamped a uh, typewriter text on it. Yeah, I think they're they're doing themselves a service. A good, uh, they're doing good by by having this uniform look on all their bottles. I've seen. Uh, I've tasted some other Maria Torriot and I've seen mm -hmm. more of it online and they they just stick with that. The Molen do the same and you can immediately recognize mm -hmm. any De Molen bottle. Yeah. Um, but they're pretty new. They've been around for a year, year and a half, something like that. Two years yeah. at most. The first time I ever tried them was uh, 2018 Cantillon Blue Bar Q. All right. So about a year then. Yeah. Not even that. I mean, that's the first time you tried them. Who knows, who knows how long they've been out. So before that. Yeah. Um, but they're rated one of the top five breweries in Sweden at this point. Number two, currently. Number two. Just under uh, Psycho Pipes. Okay. And uh, since I love not making not host, I won't say anything, but I think maybe Maria Torrid should be number one, maybe. I this is so I, I good. Think, I think it just depends. Like, Psycho Pipes isn't making stouts. They're making bold sours yes. and um, really going in that route. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's like... It's hard to compare the two in that in that respect because it, it really depends on are you a sour person or are you a stout person? Yes. And whichever one you lean more towards is the one you're going to to love more. I think. I think you. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, that said, I tried a Psycho Pipes beer recently, the Blue Spruce Sour, mm -hmm. which was made with uh, uh, spruce tips and mm -hmm. uh, blueberries. Yeah. And and I wrote uh, the review. I wrote was uh, having tasted seventeen thousand different beers. It's amazing that you can still get a flavor that you have never tried ever before in your entire life. I, I would imagine blueberries and blue spruce tips are not the... It's not the standard. Yeah. Uh, and, and that would argue for uh, Psycho Pipes yeah. being number one. Because... Yeah, because well, as much as I enjoy this, if you were to put this in a lineup of stouts, I think this would be one of the better stouts. But it's not one that I would remember having again in the future. We have had this kind of stuff before exactly. from other world yeah. leading breweries. So I don't I don't feel like this really stands out in the marketplace, but I think it's an, an amazingly good stout. Yes. Uh, so I am going to give this a let me give it a four. Okay. I, I'm I'm getting giving it a higher. Maybe I'm biased because of the rarity and the uh -huh. difficulty of getting it. I'm on a four point five right now. Yep, I can see that. You're on a little bit of a collector's high. Yep, I get but, that. But, but I, I think I think it's a really good beer. I just don't think... It doesn't give me... <clears throat> it's an exceptionally well-made stout, but it doesn't give me anything that would make me remember having it beyond today. No. Uh, it, it might but, be collector's high, but yeah. we, we mentioned flavors that you and I historically uh, disagree a little bit mm -hmm. on. Like, as soon as you say licorice... That makes me like it more when I also feel the licorice mm -hmm. because I really love that flavor, especially in a thick stout. Mm -hmm. And I know you you are at least apprehensive towards it, that type, type of flavor. It, it, it can be. Um, it's not an attack. No, no, but I mean, it's not, I don't see that as a negative flavor. 
um, unless it becomes too aggressive. Yeah. But then any flavor can be can be too vanilla or it can be too um, chocolatey or too coffee or something like that. I mean, overall. Uh, but I don't find that this is the case. I think it's a very well balanced beer. It's um, doing an exceptional job, um, and I I will definitely look for more stuff from Maria Torgent. Yeah. I, I think it's a um, this beer is amazing, and I can't wait to see what they do next. So next up is the Barrel Age Dia Noche Stout from Mostra, out of uh, Southern California. Which has cinnamon, cocoa nibs, uh, monster coffee, and blueberries. Yeah. But no, this is monster is not the brewery. Monster is the coffee style. All right. This is bottled in. Well, what's the who's the brewer then? I don't know, but uh, reading on the internet, we can add that it's the regular Dianoche stout aged in Black Tuesday barrels for twelve months. Uh, the only way I can interpret that is that they've taken the brewery's Black Tuesday barrels yeah. and repurposed them. Yeah, that's the only thing. That's the only way to, to. There is no other Black Tuesday, right? No, there's no other. So this is King's Brewing Company. Yes, out of Rancho Cucamonga. Ah, oh, Cucamonga. And I had to say that because you don't get to say Cucamonga very often, so that no. makes me very happy to say. Um, yeah. So King's Brewing. This is the barrel aged Dia Noche. Yeah. All right. This is my. I think this is well, my funny first. Because, well, it's funny because. King's Brewing isn't anywhere on here. If you didn't know that the the little crown on the yeah. on the label was King's Brewing, you would not know this is the brewery because their name is nowhere on this label. Yeah, that's really. Oh, I'm sorry. No, there it is. It's a uh, brewed and bottled in Rancho Cucamonga by King's Brewing Company. So it's it's not readily. They don't. They're not branding themselves very heavily here. No. But this is one of the ugliest beer labels I've ever seen. <laughs> But it's got good reviews. People are enjoying this, so I'm looking forward to digging into it. I have to say, blueberry stouts, not one of my favorite styles. Uh-huh. I uh, have not had one yet that I've particularly enjoyed. So let's see if I'm this is always, the one. always up to having my mind changed. Um, on the nose? Cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon. Cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon. Yeah, very big cinnamon smell. Um, like cinnamon and coffee. The beer only has 53 ratings globally. Wow, that's kind of crazy. Uh, it's got a 4.01 overall yeah. on Untapped. Nice. There's a lot of cinnamon on the nose. I do like that, cinnamon, but yeah. let's see. And this is either going to be a plus or a minus. We'll see how the, the actual taste goes. Cheers. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. A lot more coffee in the, the flavor. A lot of cinnamon. Cinnamon this, this is almost medicinal tasting. <laughs> yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Um, I'm not getting a lot of blueberries out of this one. Uh, super much cinnamon. I do feel the cocoa nibs with the. There's a chocolatey flavor. You know, when you take a sip and then you breathe out through your nose, do you get those? Because you you taste a lot through the nasal receptors. Um, whenever you you breathe out or breathe in, because your your taste buds can only handle so many flavors. So it, there's a two little holes in the top of your yeah. roof of your mouth that go to your nasal receptors. And so as you breathe in and breathe out, I get this weird, like dusty, dry yes yeah thing that's going on. And I don't know what that is or how to how to I compare it to that. I call it mocha. Yeah. To me, it's like uh, coffee powder. The coffee powder that you put on top of a mocha cup mm-hmm. of mocha. Mm-hmm. That's the dry, it's a little bit chocolatey and it's a lot of coffee. That's my connection. But I'm thinking now, since I'm not getting any blueberries out of this, I might be thinking about this from a Swedish blueberry perspective and not the American bullshit blueberry perspective where blueberries are white inside. Like, they're super big uh, compared to Swedish blueberries and they taste nothing. Could be, could be, but I mean, I don't think they're going out and buying probably the mass-produced stuff that's sold for public consumption. They're probably going to something like Oregon Fruit Growers or another 
niche farm that specializes in blueberry production because maybe a lot of craft brewers are, are very particular about where they source their, yep. their fruits from um and uh I, I don't know that they're going to just like go to the local kroger or whatever and just <laughs> uh costco or sam's club and just buy a bunch of frozen blueberries there and maybe not yeah but there's a so much cinnamon on the nose When I when I try the, your technique of uh, breathing through the nose, mm-hmm. I get more like there is this dryness, but there is also like an alcohol fumey. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I don't taste the alcohol in the in the flavor, but I taste it in this the the, the fumes. Yeah, it's really smooth. Um, it's ten percent ABV. But it drinks really easy. I mean, it's very smooth. It's not boozy at all. I mean, same thing with the uh, long long cork. Yeah. It's not twelve percent, not boozy in the least. Agreed. Uh, both of these are extremely easy to drink. Um, but when you compare this to the long cork, and I will call it long cork now. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is like the the long the long cork is just more. It's cleaner. It's easier to drink. It's more simple. It's I think a little more refined. Yeah, a lot thicker. A lot thicker. Um, <laughs> but like, I find that this one, I don't get the barrel aged off of this. No. Um, I don't know what that's, I don't know what the the Blue Black Tuesday barrel was supposed to add to this. I don't know if there's any complexity or flavor dynamics that I'm, that it's bringing to it. Um, for me, it's a little more muddled. And the fact that it's got so many different flavors competing with each other that nothing really comes through. And none of it's bad, but none of it's really great either. I agree. <laughs> mm. I think there's this weird, like slightly medicinal flavor to it that I just don't know. It could be. The blueberries in connection with the Black Tuesday barrel aging is giving it this slightly herbal botanical yeah. note that I don't think makes it a better beer. I think it just makes it a weird off flavor. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, sh- um, we should really have the the regular Dianoche side by side. Otherwise, n- now it's difficult to know what the barrel aging adds. Uh, that's true. Um, but having said all that, I mean, it's still not, um, it's not a bad beer. It's worth trying at the very least. Uh, so what, what would, what would you give this? I have to say that I'm, I'm actually a little bit disappointed mm-hmm. in this. So I'm, I'm going to give it a 3.75. Yeah. I am actually surprised that this gets as high a rating uh, which again is a 4.01 on untapped out of 53 reviews, which is extremely high. Yeah, people are really loving this beer, but I gotta say, it's I think it's a bit of a mess. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to give it a 3.5. Yeah, um, I understand, and that's not to say that I wouldn't drink it again if someone's offering another bottle of this, I would easily drink it, but it's just not. Yeah, it's just not hitting the the notes for me in any particular. If it was stand out in one direction, if it was like wow, blueberries, wow, chocolate, wow, cinnamon. I mean, cinnamon is one thing that's definitely going on. Yeah, but I think something again needs to be a little more balanced and um, a little more composed of a of a beer. Yeah, well, thank you for for bringing both of these on the show today. I really appreciate it. Um, two Especially since the the long cock was so thick. Who doesn't like a nice, thick, long cock? Exactly. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Yeah, of course. To have it on record. A, ni- a nice, thick, black, long cock. It's, yeah, it's super it's black. It's everything that you could really want from a beer and, and more. Yeah. Really I, I just love the smell of this beer. Yes. Um, yeah, it's a really, really good beer. Um, all right. So you can find us online at whatsontappodcast.com. Um, Spotify, Instagram, Facebook. I don't know. Someplace else I'm forgetting. Oh, YouTube. That's the one. YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. Um, 
So please check us out online, uh, comment. Uh, we'd love to hear what you think about some of the beers that we've reviewed. Um, any feedback you have would be very appreciated. So until next time. You dum dum stop don't stop drinking. All right, keep drinking, you dum dums. <laughs> I know. <laughs>